please help and left it there. So, um, so you telling this board that you walking outside of your house, clothed only in your sleep shorts. Sleeping shorts and socks, yes. Socks. You have wounds on your body. Correct. You have blood spatter at least on your shorts, your sleeping shorts. Correct. You are on the phone and you ask this woman, please get help, please help, something to that effect. Correct. And she does nothing. But we we'll assume, I would, it appears that she did nothing, yes. Given that all the state witnesses who weren't called was made available to the defense, would you not have expected that if she corroborated your version that the defense would call them? Um, the witness that the accused referred to, Mr. Fum, sorry, Mr. Fumbridal referred to, jogged his memory because of the statement in the police document from your members to be employed somewhere on the state as a domestic worker? And had she corroborated your version of asking her for help, would that not be an important witness to be called? She was made available to the defense. I suppose so. client is in charge of which witness will be called, not I am. I make those decisions. It's an unfair statement to the witness. That's good. It's going to be all you can put to the witness that there is a statement, there's a statement from this witness, and uh, that witness must not call. You can't take it further. I think that objection is probably. That's good, please. I will leave it at that. Um, now, moving a bit forward, Mr. Van der Dahl, to early hours of the morning of 27th of January 2015. What was your first indication that something was wrong or something out of the ordinary was taking place in your house? The sounds I heard from the bathroom. Do you have any indication as to around what time this might have taken place? I don't. I, just, I didn't um, find any evidence at all, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that you in actual fact did fall asleep, did fall asleep after putting in your earphones and listening to music and before you got up to go to the bathroom. Did you in actual fact fall asleep or not? No, I didn't fall asleep. With regards to your family, Mr. Van Regard, just something that I forgot to ask you earlier before we got to the 27th of January, um, James Reed John testified and said that he found your father to be more dominant, to be a more dominant and controlling figure in the family. Do you agree with that or not? Um, I suppose he, he was a rather dominant figure. Yes, but, um, yes, I'm not surprised by James's assessment of him. My dad had a lot of fun. Um, teasing James with the, the way that he uh, gave massive amounts of deference to my dad and, um, and so on. So I'm not surprised that that's James's opinion of... What's your opinion of your dad? Do you agree with James? Uh, somewhat. Yes. Why do you agree with him? Uh, my father was a very strong man. He um, He... Um, he was always in, in charge of his own companies, etc., and he was always the boss. Um, so, a dominant would be an accurate word, I guess, but um, whether that is as relevant to the family scenario is, is what I'm doubting, what I'm um, disagreeing with. Mr. Van der Dahl, 
Okay. Now, commented on the dominant part, what about the fact that James took the view that your father was controlling, controlling that person? Uh, I think that's, again, just based on his experience with Marley at the time. I mean, my, this is Marley's first serious boyfriend, so naturally, Dad was very protective over her, so... You see, uh, James also testified that, um, that there were arguments in the family because of his actions in, in controlling the family. Yes, um, as I think in, in because in most families, um, at at that particular time, it was more centered on Marley. She was busy growing up and, I guess, starting to rebel. Um, but nothing out of the ordinary for a regular family, I would say. Am I correct to say, Mr. Van Bredaar, that uh, you never smoked in the house when your parents were at home? Correct. Do I understand correctly from your evidence with regards to the pair of shoes, the loafers, that you actually hid your cigarettes in the shoes behind the stairs? Well, I kept my shoes there. I kept a pack of cigarettes there. I would usually go for a walk with Sasha and then um, have some cigarettes on the walk. So, were your parents aware of the fact that you smoked? Yes, but they didn't want me smoking in front of Marley. And what about smoking inside? Is that agreeable to them or not? No. Now you've already testified that according to the DNA evidence available, it appears that you, on the morning of 27th of January 2015, in actual fact, smoked three cigarettes in the house. Correct. Smoke those three cigarettes whilst at the kitchen counter. Correct. I lit, lit the first one at the at, at the kitchen counter while the um, emergency call was dialing, um, and I think pretty much as those finished, I would light another one. So, do I understand you correctly? You smoked them in short succession, one after the other. Yes. Um, and if I have regard to Exhibit A, the photographs, photos 40 to 44, it um, doesn't even appear whether you, that you use an ashtray, some sort of substitute. No, I didn't. Um, the, there was no ashtray around. I suppose I probably would have used one if, if we had, but um, we didn't really maintain ashtrays, especially not inside the house. I, th I think it just fell on the ground. I think it just fell on the ground. I, I don't think I was very concerned with um, ash on the floor of the house. Not just the ash, Mr. Van Bredaar, the, the, the almost finished cigarettes, the finished cigarette butt, it's also not put out. It's merely dropped to the, to the ground. Yeah, I distinctly remember dropping one and not picking it up, just lighting another. My the hands were shaking so much that I just fell out of my hand and burnt out on the ground. See, it's, it's something that um, Sergeant Plainans remarked on when he, when he observed the scene, that the cigarettes were just dropped there, the ash and cigarettes, and again just nodding. Correct. Why was why did you act in that way? Not using the substitute at least on ash, letting this ash fall on the floor, letting the cigarette butts fall on the floor. I was smoking in order to be able to communicate on the phone. I um, was very much struggling to to speak at that point. I was breathing. cannot speak under these circumstances. So smoking to 
calm myself enough to be able to speak over the phone is what I was doing. I was not concerned about um, the cleanliness of the house. So it's not a question of you being of the view that um, parents are, are dead in any event, what does it matter whether they like you smoking in the house or not? No. I mean, we, um, we actually have smoked in the house before. For Rudy's birthday, um, he got a pair of cigarettes, a pair of um, sorry, nice cigars from a friend of his. And we had them in the house, me, Rudy, Dad and Mom, while Morley was at a friend's. That is a special occasion? Yes. And you just testified that the parents didn't like you smoking in the house? <laughs> yes. I think these are circumstances that would have proven understandable. And would have, excuse me, would have? And I think they would have understood. A lot. Would have understood. Yes. <coughs> and do I understand you correctly that you, in actual fact, smoke three cigarettes? while sitting at the counter. <coughs> yes. When we... Um, did you say something? <coughs> Moving on to the... Uh, are you okay? No, no. This is about the volume, mate. I know you've got a problem sitting here. No, I'm okay. Thank you. Moving on to the events in the early hour of 27th of January 2015, Mr. Van der the attack. How many attackers did you in actual fact see in your room during the whole thing? At least one. Mr. Van Bredov, you say at least one. Is it one? Is it two? How many did you see in your room? One at a person at a time. I don't understand your evidence. What do you mean by one person at the time? As far as I can recall, it was the same person that left my room and came back into the room. But given the amount of certainty you seem to be asking, I can't be that certain. So do you not trust your own memory whether it was the same person or not? <coughs> no, I do trust. So, I mean, I don't you, as far as you remember, it was the same person who went up and who came back? Correct. So then why say at least one person who came to Why try to create the impression that it might have been two different people? Because I heard the voice of someone else in the house later on. That's why I specifically asked you, sir, how many attackers came into your, house, into your room. I didn't ask you how many attackers were in your house. Yes. Okay, so... According to you, how many attackers were in your room? At least one. You still stick with the one. one. Is it at least one or one? It's at least one. You still not willing to say there's just the one that you saw that went out and came back in? I don't think we can be 100% sure of that. Then you say your memory is fallible? I'm saying what anyone who saw what I saw so, would not be able to tell. But all the prosecutors tried to get from you, and you saw one person. As far as I recall, yes. Any idea what made the attacker come to the boys' room as you described it? I would be speculating, but. <clears throat> it was the first room on the way upstairs. 
And at the time when he entered the room, you were in the bathroom, which is to the right hand end of the, the door, to the right hand end of the room, correct? Correct. And you had partially closed the door. Correct. And Rudy was in his bed, <coughs> fast asleep. Correct. The room was dark. Correct. Why did they not just grab what he came and exit the room? Would you in any way be able to tell or enlighten this court as to why you would then go on and attack Rudy in his bed? No, I don't know. It appears so. No, I can't. I can't, my lord. Mr. Witter, what do you think of this? 